Welcome to the second half of our course, Computation Heat and Fluid Flow. The first part we have been looking at the basic equations, the diffusion equation, the linear diffusion equation, the Burgess equation, the 1D Euler equation, 1D Navier-Stokes equations, and the 2D Burgess equation. And we saw also an outlook for doing 2D problems using the Euler and Navier-Stokes equation. So, we are starting the second part, and that will be, be devoted to steady state problems, both diffusion, convection diffusion, it will be dealing with heat uh, transfer problems, and we are ending up at the incompressible Navier Stokes equations. So, we will solve them. So, then we will start, set the, uh, the outline, and that will be done. This chapter will be then devoted to the finite volume method for steady diffusion problems. And we shall focus on conservation laws as we have been doing so far. And we shall look at them in integral form because that is the natural form from which they are derived from the basic physical principles. Um, and the other reason for us is when we do the discretization, then we discretize the integral form of the conservation laws. So they can be written now in the following form. So we have again our standard uh, view. We have a control volume omega with a boundary d omega and an outer unit normal vector n, which is normal to the tangent at uh, some point. So that is denoted by n. And then we have a time derivative of um, some property that we can be different things, but it will be in the end what we shall look at here that will be the time derivative of this uh, quantity, it will be volume integral, and then this will be the rate of change of mass times phi in the control volume. So this will be the rate of change of the mass times phi. A simple example is phi equal to 1. Then it is the rate of change of mass itself that we will consider here. And it is just d rho dt standing here. And that is then in the control, in the control volume omega. So, and then we have some convective flux over the boundary of the control volume and that we can express as rho phi and then the normal velocity component will come in u dot n that is the normal velocity component and we have, we'll have a surface integral so this quantity here that is the net the net convective flow of the quantity that we are considering is the mass times phi. Again, the example phi equal 1, it would be the convective flow of mass, or so the mass flow, over the boundary of the control volume, over the e omega. And then we also have a diffusive flow, and that will also be a volume integral, a surface, a surface integral, and that is then described by some a diffusion coefficient gamma, that is now the notation. And this notation is from Patanka. And then we have here the gradient of the quantity phi that we are considering. And then we have a gradient, so that will give us a vector. And we take the inner product with the outer unit normal vector n. That's also a surface integral. So that is then the net diffusive flow. For 
example, if we would have diffusion, we would have not uh, just rho, if phi would be, say, a mass fraction, the diffusion of some species, then we can have that. So the net diffusive flow of the quantity that we are considering, the mass times phi over the boundary of the control volume. And then we might also have a source term. And that will be a volume integral, and we find the source by S phi. And that is then the rate of change of the quantity that we are considering, that is the mass times phi uh, in the control volume omega due to some source. If we take the example of the mass fraction, if we have uh, um, chemical reactions going on in combustion, then that would be, uh, say, some source that might have that. Or in heat conduction we could have that. So that would be the integral form. And we can immediately write that also in the differential form if, you, if we assume that we have a smooth flow problem and that phi, the quantity that we are considering, is also smooth. So that means we have the conservation laws in integral form, or we have it in differential conservative form. And that is again for smooth. I write here flow, but it's meant also the, the phi might also be a, a temperature, whatever we might consider. And then the argument is then again, as we had used before, we would use the Gauss theorem to get the surface integral into volume integrals, and then we would have to get the divergence of these quantities. Um, uh, let's see, we would get the... Yes, we would get the divergence. And we can see that now, and we get then the time derivative of rho phi dt, that is already then uh, under the volume integral, and then by using the Gauss theorem, as I just said, we get the divergence of, and the quantity that is then getting in here is the rho phi, the density times the quantity that we are considering, times the velocity vector u. On the right hand side, we have the divergence of the diffusion coefficient gamma times the gradient of phi. And then we might, we, the source term is then appearing naturally in this way. So then we have here the outline. And now we can look at examples. And examples we have already had quite some. Um, well, I need some space. Let's have that in mind. And then take this away. And all the equations that we have been considering so far they were conservation laws. And so we make now a little table with some examples. So we have equation and now we have the physical quantity that we consider. We have the diffusion coefficient and we have the source term. First, for the source we leave some space, and we start with the very beginning of the lecture with the compressible continuity equation. Or 
as already mentioned before, in that case, the find would be 1. So then we would have the rho dt plus the diversion of rho u, the gamma would be 0, and the source term would be 0. So that would be then the example of the compressible continuity equation. Now, if we look for the incompressible x-momentum equation, then the phi will be u, the elastic component in the x-direction. So we'll have rho u, vector u, and here we will have the viscosity if we assume that the viscosity is constant. And then here we can get the, the negative pressure gradient and also the source term if we have that. So then we will get the following u, the last component in x direction, the viscosity coefficient mu, and then the negative of now the x component then of the negative gradient is minus dp dx. And the source term would be we had noted by F1. Imagine F would be the gravity, the gravitational acceleration. So it would be the X component and all that. In a similar way, we can do that for the Y momentum equation. Then it will be V, mu, and here we'll get minus dP dy plus rho F2. The Y component of the, for example, the gravitational acceleration. In the Z momentum equation, we would get the W, the Z component, the viscosity coefficient minus dP dZ, and the Z component of rho times the Z component, or the Z component of rho uh, F. So, then we can also look at the incompressible energy equation. Well, the equation is up there already. So, we can formulate that now. You see here, usually would have here um, rho is, is constant, then you can put it, but you leave it inside, it doesn't matter. We would then have uh, Cv times T. But for incompressible flow, we usually assume that Cv is equal to Cp. So we can divide then by Cp. And then we will have here the, it will be just the temperature appearing. And here we will have the thermal conductivity, K, gradient of T, temperature, which we have divided by the Cp, so that will be the denominator. And here we will have then the terms that are caused by the heat generated by viscous effects. And we might also have a heat source and, uh, of course, heat conduction. So what we get in the end will then be the temperature, will be our the physical variable that we consider, thermal conductivity divided by the specific heat at constant pressure, now assuming Cp equals Cv, and the, um, the term that is then caused by the, the viscous um, effects, that is the uh, diffusion, viscous diffusion term, that is the, um, the viscous uh, stress tensor tau, the dot product with the gradient, and that is then dot product with the velocity, so altogether that's a scalar, and that is divided by Cp. So Cp, like that. And we might also have a, say, a, if we had a heat source, then we would have, say, Q point divided by Cp. We might also have that. The heat conduction is in here. So then we might have also, as mentioned as an example already, species <coughs> continuity equations. So if 
you would have uh, pollution, you would have different substances, say in a river or so, then you would have, say, the, the concentration of, uh, say, CO2 or whatever you like. And what we look, we can look at is the mass fraction. That is the mass of this, so if you're, for example, CO2 with respect to the mixture. The diffusion coefficient is dL of this species. Rho dL is then entering, and uh, we will have then also a diffusion that is then described here, the diffusion of this uh, species. And the source term, we might have chemical reactions that is common to combustion. So that would be omega L. So this is the mass fraction, so just to for explanation, because we had not had that, so the YL, capital YL, that is the mass fraction, so that is the, the mass of the species L divided by the mass of the mixture. And that is the mass fraction. We might have a couple of them in combustion. We, we do good all, all details. We might have even hundreds of them. Usually, only the most important ones are considered. The dL is the diffusion coefficient. and you see we can write the ones that we are most interested in in this form. Now, in this chapter here, we'll focus on uh, a simplification. And the simplification will be that we look at steady uh, problem. In a steady problem, the time derivative is zero. And we look at a problem where the flow is zero. So where the, where the velocity is zero, so that this flow at rest, so this is zero. So then we, the left side will be gone, and we only have the right hand side. And then we look first at 1D, and then at 2D. So let us write that. So for steady diffusion, that is what we consider now. We assume that the time derivative is t is zero and that the velocity is zero. So that means that we assume steady state and we assume that the, the convective flow is neglected. We don't have that. And then this equation simplifies. Changed. So we have the surface integral of the diffusion coefficient gamma times the gradient of our physical quantity that we consider with the inner product with the outer unit normal vector, surface integral, and we have the volume integral over the source term S5. So that is then the integral form of the steady diffusion. Or, in differential form, again assuming that we have enough uh, 
smoothness, it's such that we can use the Gauss theorem here. Then we get the divergence of the diffusion coefficient, the gradient of our physical quantity phi, plus the source term as phi. Okay, so that is then the equation, these are the equations in integral and in differential form that we are considering for steady diffusion. So now we do the discretization. Steintore Johansen, who was uh, doing, giving the lecture when I was on sabbatical uh, two years ago. Regarding literature, if you look at the outline of the course contents, you will see references to the textbook by Versteg Malala Zekera. And this book is relevant now for this part. And our textbook that we have that is, I think, very good for the fundamental part is not so good at this. So then it is better to look directly into Versteg Malala Zekera. You have the references given at the home page. And you will get these course, these lecture notes, as I mentioned. So the finite volume method for the 1D, uh, <coughs> 1D steady diffusion problem. Here we make a couple of assumptions. So in 1D, we assume the following. Um, we assume that the control volume that we consider has constant cross-section. assume something of the following kind. Uh, for example, uh, we have a, a, a pipe. And then so that is now our control volume omega. And to focus on it, we do it like as we discussed for the um, for the diffusion problem. In, uh, for the time dependent problem, for the heat conduction equation, for example, then we denote this control volume as omega p. And for example, here we would have a circular cross section which would be the same. And then we, we would have then an eastern, the area at the eastern and the area at the western face, they would be the same. And the notation is regarding the uh, coordinate system that we assume that we have the x direction that that is the axial direction and then the, the directions in the cross section are y and z so if you would cut through we would have then uh, the cross section that is then the same so the other assumption is um, 
Well, uh, the quadrilogue has constant cross section A with area A, and we assume then that the axis is the um, that the cross section is normal to this x-axis. And the other assumption is that the variable phi, the physical variable that we that we consider, the flow or the thermal variable phi. Uh, only depends on x, that is the axial direction. So that means we have phi is only a function of x. So we have constant cross section and we have only an x dependence. That means in the cross section the variable phi is constant. And another assumption is that we assume that there is no diffusive flow over the case. We have only we assume that we have only diffusive flow over the ends, nothing over the case. So we assume that this is insulated, that there is no diffusive flow going across this case, or that this is considered in the source term. We shall see an example on that. So that is the diffusive flow over the case of uh, the control volume that we consider here, omega p. Um, well, then let me also write here a p omega p if we do it everywhere is neglected. or modeled by the source term S5. So under these assumptions, which are then the, the 1D assumptions that we do here, we then get the following form. And we look then for this integral form. So from that we get equation 5. On the left hand side we have 0. And then we have we said that we have only the diffusive fluxes over the ends. So then we'll have, um, and we have said also that that um, that we have constant states. So then we can just evaluate this state here. So we have one state there, and then the surface integral will just be that state that we have at this end, e times the area. So that means we will get the gamma, the diffusion coefficient, times the area, times the d phi dx. So the gradient, the n will be 1, 0, 0. So we'll get only this component, d phi dx, at the eastern phase. So and it will be the same at the whole phase, because phi is constant, also the gradient is constant. So therefore we get this times this, times the air at the eastern phase. That is the diffusive flux over the eastern phase for this one problem. For the western phase, the normal is pointing in negative x direction, so we get the similar thing but with a minus. And the argument is the same, everything is constant, also the gradient and the x derivative, so we get then the diffusion coefficient there times the area times the uh, derivative is phi dx at the western phase. Then we have considered the ends. And the diffusive flux over the case, that is what we said here, that is neglected. So there we have nothing. Therefore we have so. And what is left is the source term. And the source term is then this one here. And there we introduce now the average source term S uh, bar times the volume of the cell P. 
So in here, the S bar is then the source average. So we can say that in the following way, it's 1 divided by the volume of the cell omega p times the integral over the control volume omega p times s of s5 dv. So this is the, the important equation for the 1D diffusion, and that is the integral form. And the dp that we have here, so that is the average source. That is appearing, and the dp is the volume of the, of the cell. And we know what that is if we have this situation here. If the cross-section is constant, it's just a times the difference between xe and xw. So that will be then the volume of the cell, omega p. That is the volume. So that is what we have done so far. Is all um, exact within our assumptions? We have not yet done any uh, approximation. That is coming now because we do the same. Um, we have the same philosophy as before. We want to approximate cell averages. And if we have cell averages, imagine we have also neighboring cells, west, eastern and western, and then the goal will be to approximate these diffusive fluxes in terms of the cell averages. And then we will get the finite volume method. So then that means then we have to approximate the diffusion coefficient if it is not constant but dependent on, say, on the neighboring, on, on, uh, on phi itself, we have to know that then at the faces, but we know only the averages. So that is one thing we have to approximate. The A is given, that is given by the problem, that is a geometrical quantity, but we have to approximate the derivative. We have get exactly the same problem that we discussed for the 1D uh, diffusion or 1D heat conduction equation, just the same. And we have also to approximate the source term. So that is that we'll do now. So in the finite order method, the diffusion coefficient, if it's dependent on the the variable phi and the derivative d phi dx at uh, the eastern and western faces mm, that is e and w Um, are determined um, by means of approximations Sorry, by approximations not of phi, phi p, the approximations phi p, uh, they are approximations of the cell of the cell averages. So we call the, the approximations. Um, uh, sorry, just one. We call the approximation phi p, and the cell average we call as I think we use the. the the, the head before now we use the bar phi p bar as the average phi p 
the, the derivative, uh, the one over the volume times the volume integral over phi of x dz. So that is the cell average. That is in the cell P, in cell, another name is control volume, P, and the neighboring cells E and W. So then we extend this domain to also have neighboring, uh, have neighbors. something to the following. So we extend this uh, pipe and then we have a western control volume, say omega capital W, and then in the middle we have our control volume omega P. And then we have control volume to here, the control volume omega capital E. So that is then the idea to approximate both the diffusion coefficient gamma and the derivative phi dx by means of the cell averages in the cells P, E and W. And the source average S bar is usually approximated by S of phi p. We'll come to that in a minute. So when we look at that in more detail. So, then we have a set now the framework, and then we can do the finite volume approximation much the same way as we did for the uh, diffusion or the heat conduction equation. But now we shall look a little bit differently as we did before. What we have done in the first part of the course was the cell-centered finite volume method. We are now going to see the node-centered finite volume method much the same, but it's the focus is a little bit different. The, so application um, of the node center and volume method consists, you can do it like that, uh, that we are following three steps. And the steps are grid generation, discretization with the finite volume method, and then finally the solution of the linear system that we get. So the first step is the step one, the grid generation. It is essentially telling us where we store our unknowns, in that case our cell averages, and where our, our flux is. And that is a little bit different to what we have discussed so far. So, let's see. This is an outline for the things to come. Let's see if we would imagine
So we can now focus then on, on this framework here, but now we want to cover the whole domain. This is now the axis, and say this is the left boundary XA, and this is the right boundary XB of the domain. And there we want to solve the steady diffusion problem. Now, opposed to what we did before, before we defined the phases, and by that we defined the control volumes. Now we do it differently. We define the, the grid points, or the nodes, first. So, for example, if we define the x1 here, we define the x2, they don't need to be equidistant. We have uh, still the freedom as we like. So and that would be then the X and J. So we define the grid points. And they are in this notation XJ. And the J is as you see here from 1 to NJ. So they are and they are also called nodes grid points or nodes. So when we have defined them, we define the faces <coughs> of the control volumes by the midpoints of the adjacent nodes. So faces um, of control volume omega j by the midpoints of adjacent nodes. And that would be then uh, the following, that we say the xj plus minus one half, so we use again the same notation as we used with the cell-centered finite volume method for the faces, but now we, we define them as the midpoints of these nodes, as xj plus xj plus or minus one. So that means that we look now for the midpoints. So here we have, we have the midpoint here, Midpoint here, here. So if this would be the xj, then this would be the xj plus one half, which is defined as the midpoint between xj plus one and xj. And this would be the xj minus one half. So then we would do it in this way. And then we use again the double notation. Either we call this cell uh, J or we call it uh, pi, so we have different options to do it. So that would be, could call it P, and this we could call little w, or this we could call little e. And this we could call the eastern, so it would be the xj plus 1, and the xj minus 1 would be the capital W. So we use these double notation either with letters the center, control on P, Eastern and Western with capital letters, and the faces with small, with lowercase letters, E and W. Or we use the index notation. And then we can also introduce the, um, the length of these uh, control volumes, but I think we'll take that after the break. Well, before we go into the break, an important, uh, two important announcements. You'll find them on uh, its learning. And the one is regarding um, STAR CCM Plus. That will be the topic of our um, that will be the topic of our last assignment. So you, you have probably already received uh, uh, an email from 
Christopher, Christopher Wanner. And um, we'll do that in the, uh, in the week starting with on November 9th. Uh, November 9th, yeah. So on, on that Monday, we'll, we'll have the introduction to Star C Plus and do the exercise 12 on that. This week, we'll start with Fortran. So the exercise 8, and also 9, 10, and 11 will be done in Fortran. And on Thursday, we have here the information. Uh, we will not have a guidance on exercise 7, but an introduction to Fortran in the same room as we really have that. So then you are invited to that. And um, I also suggest that you uh, install Fortran compiler. You have links, uh, you will find links on that on your laptop. Okay. Yes. About the email, I didn't receive one yet. Is it? Uh, have any, has anybody received an email by Christopher Wanner? Yes. Have you checked your internal equipment? Like on the is logging page? No, no, no you, it's, you have an NTNU email address. Oh, okay. And all active and um, students and registered in its learning can have only those data that I saw. I've given these emails to the Wanner. Okay. So um, then um, he has used that email address. So there you were invited to uh, um, free. Star CCM Plus student licenses. So you can accept that or not. You don't need to accept that. There is no obligation by no means. It's just an offer. Um, uh, for those who uh, don't want to have this license, I, I asked uh, our system manager Eugene Hüthaug from our department of energy and process engineering to install the Star CCM Plus on a couple of PCs in the computer room Notre Dame. And uh, you will find also the data on, on that in the <coughs> message. Yes. Can you run that program on the MacBook? I would think so, but I don't know. That you would have to check with uh, the CD adapter, adapter or uh, I, I suppose they have some information. Okay. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I have mine on, on, a, on a usual uh, laptop. Other points regarding this? 